Hello and welcome to Pacific Pulse. I'm Clement Paligaru. Coming up, showcasing dances from Melanesia in the heart of Polynesia. Traditional canoe building and navigation are going through a revival in some parts of the Pacific. Here in Yap in the Federated States of Micronesia, it's all about making sure ancient skills don't disappear. Thousands of years ago, the seafarers of Yap were among the most skilled canoe builders and navigators in Micronesia. In more recent times, many of their traditions have almost been lost. There came a time that we were running out of canoes. Some, some of our canoes, you know, they were too old, getting rotten and getting worn out. Typhoons broke some of them. And so uh, the elders decided to revive the, the knowledge, the skills, and uh, everything that had to do with canoes, including the making and the building. To me, in order to keep the knowledge of canoe making, canoe sailing, and things that has to do with canoes, uh, we have to talk to the children or the youth about it. Uh, I come involved when they uh, start talking about uh, canoe and uh, it's uh, our uh, traditional way uh, of uh, traveling and for us youngster we don't really know anything about canoe so it's better for us to start learning from this time and so we can pass the traditional to our uh, kids and youngster in the future. Very few people can build canoe. That's why we start uh, to carve canoe to learn how. We don't use the measuring tape. We use a little string to measure the canoe. And we use the finger to measure the canoe. And we need the tools to carve. Anyone can build it, but uh, most uh, the important of it is you have to know the, the measurement for each part to each part. So when the canoe sail, it's much better in the ocean. And when the wave hit it, it's much easier to split the wave. This is the first time that we, we have the canoe built in our village. So we are very proud. There are now a number of canoes on Yap, built by communities under the guidance of the Yap Traditional Navigation Society, which was set up to revive traditional methods of canoe building and navigation, and importantly, reinstill cultural pride among the young. I'm very proud of, uh, of what we're doing. Uh, I come every day, uh, try to finish the canoe and, and see it sail. The young people, they don't know how to to sail canoe because it's really hard to sail canoe. And that's why we want to bring back and teach them how to, to sail canoe and go fishing. There are certain uh, skills that are needed in sailing, like the ropes and uh, how to move the sail from one end to the other. Otherwise, the sails will keep falling down or the canoe will end up capsizing. For navigation, you have to uh, be an expert in weather. When there is no wind, sailing cannot be done. And then you have to know about the uh, current of the water. And then you have also to uh, know which parts of the year are good for sailing and which, uh, which months are bad because of typhoons. It's very important because uh, a long time ago we don't have a campus, a radar, but uh, we sail from 
island to island in the canoe. So it's pretty important for us to know and keep the canoe alive. I like to keep that uh, tradition. Yeah. So I can, uh, someday I will pass, by, pass it to the another generation. So I want to keep that uh, culture. Dance is a really big part of cultural identity here in the Pacific. But here in Polynesia, it's not often they get to see really authentic Melanesian dance. And that's what's so great about the Festival of Pacific Arts. It's that rare chance for us to see each other's cultural dances. At the last festival in American Samoa, I caught up with a group representing just a small taste of Papua New Guinea's many hundreds of cultures to the rest of the island countries. With the diversity which we have, we try as much as possible to bring uh, the contingent which is representative of the country. So three uh, regions which were represented uh, properly was, uh, were the southern region which had Millen Bay and the Highlands region which had um, uh, Western Highlands with a full contingent and also uh, East New Britain, the New Guinea Islands. So in all, we had um, a total of seven groups uh, who are here with us. The goals and the aims of this festival that's set by our leaders uh, a long time ago was basically to combat the erosion of Pacific cultures in the region. So in that respect, we try as much as possible to bring groups uh, which are close to being original as possible. Uh, I know, you know there is no such thing as originality these days when you have had a hundred years and more of uh, contact with the outside world, but I think there are some things which are still fairly uh, very original. as a benefit from this uh, from the Festival of Pacific Arts is the the chance that we get to step outside of our own little village and our little province or even the whole country and come to a setting like what we have in, in American Samoa and one to look at yourself in the mirror and say this is what I am and then you look at others and say okay this is what these people are and you wake up an idea on what you have and at the same time realize how much other people have lost. Uh, and that is an important realization for all of us because uh, if you don't do that, you become complacent, you take things for granted. quite pleased with the way the, the, the local people have uh, responded to our people. Uh, I was quite surprised that uh, people thought that we were, we were recreating the dances and performances from 200 years ago which we had never performed anymore and I said we have to go and visit the Pacific. Some of you have to come to Melanesia to Papua New Guinea to see that. To see that these dances are what we have today. They're not things we read out of books. We didn't go to any archive to pull these dances out. They are still the same as, as they are. That's all from us this week. You can follow all of our stories from right across the Pacific on our website. And I'll see you next time on Pacific Pulse. <laughs>